Hello everyone, and welcome to another set of Zero K Exhibition matches. I'm your host Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and it's been a while. Let's get started. Nighthawk, Cloakies, Castry with Cloakies, and we are on Titan Duel, and that just me or is things choppy? Yeah, maybe it's just me. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have... No, I'll check it in between. It... Now we're good. Alright, anyway. Night Dog going for a relatively normal setup with a couple early glaives. Starting out, as you, as you do. Catastrophe being a little more aggressive with theirs, mind you. That is the typical cloak you start. A couple glaives go out scout. Then you get your conjurer, start building up with them. But this is going to be a little bit more in Catastrophe's favor. They already have three glaives to two in this fight. They haven't even start. Catastrophe trying to find another position to work from. A little iffy. They have only one glaive that's damaged. Nighthawk! Never mind, winning this micro battle, and that is going to give Nighthawk pretty much full control over their corner of the map. Catastrophe you're not going to be able to set up any glaives in the meantime, whereas Nighthawk, if they keep these glaives alive, they could very easily maintain or get an opening, you know, like I said, maintain control of their corner of the map, make sure they don't get hit too much. It won't, like, go as far as saying this bottom left corner is open, but actually it might be able to really help with that. Catastrophe trying to set up for more of the same. Nighthawk, on the other hand, looking to really contain out Catastrophe with these glaives. Not looking to get any kills, just not so far anyway. Positioning more for position. These ones over in the main base, just scouting out, seeing what's going on. Seeing if there's any easy metal extractors to take out, and there are not. Smart use of lotuses to prevent that from happening. But of course, the real question becomes, what next? And what next is that Nighthawk throws their glaives away. A little bit miss micro there. Fortunate for them, and swell glaives over to the top. But the information has been gathered. That is the most important thing here. Nighthawk switching off the Raider game immediately. Catastrophe maintaining their presence in the Raider game. Same with glaives. Nighthawk does have a few. Okay, they have a few glaives. They're just adding the Reavers for extra defensive purposes. And I agree with that. So you see, Nighthawk has been able to pressure Catastrophe, but hasn't really been able to win any Glaive encounters. So Reaver will provide a useful way of doing that. Not to mention, Nighthawk is clearly looking at taking the northeast side of the map. Like they're, they are, they have their eyes in the corners. Southwest is being taken by Nighthawk's commander. In the northeast, however, that is where Nighthawk had to protect a little more force. There isn't as much of a direct mech line to the northeast as there is to the southwest, so it's harder to just kind of assume, which means that Catastrophe is going to be the one building up towards the northeast, and Nighthawk wants to make sure that that doesn't happen. And Nighthawk also going to make sure that a lot of expansion doesn't happen. This Conjurer does go down. Nice kill from Nighthawk. Completely closing off the southwest expansion opportunities for Catastrophe. Nighthawk has that all to themselves. Great use of well-targeted raids just to make sure that Catastrophe really can't expand outside of their main base corner. As a white paid off yet, though, Catastrophe is still economically on par with Nighthawk. They can easily build back up. Factory seems to see more glaives than them, but let's check the factory. They might have started going for Ronin. No, continue on with the glaives. Your glaive, and unfortunately running that straight into the opponents with the Reaver there, that's not really a great option. I mean, the, the trick at that point becomes making sure that you have your knowledge where the Reaver is, which Radar is, well, the Catastrophe's commander has Radar, so that that's the only Radar Catastrophe has, actually. But still, Catastrophe has that Radar, so they at least know where the Reaver is roughly. And then from there, they know where the Reaver isn't, and they can set the, they set their glaives on some other part of the map. That's kind of what you got to do mid-game with Raiders, and it is a tough play. And it's, it's hard to remember sometimes to do that, and it's also just a lot to focus on. Catastrophe. That's where the drones. No big deal there. Continues to run away from the glaives. Good, good choice. Very smart. Don't approach. Don't engage unless you absolutely have to. And there's the Ronin switch. Or at least 
Ronin support. Not so much a switch. We look at the factory. Ronin are not being produced on repeat, but five Ronin are still up here to help deal with the Reaver. And I love this placement. All the glaives coming here for catastrophe and a nice, nice efficient line able to completely wipe out Nighthawk's forces. Brilliant pre-battle positioning there from catastrophe. And from there, Catastrophe able to take out this Stardust. Ronin come in as well. Nighthawk's commander is heavily under threat. Catastrophe won't be able to take out most of the base. Getting destroyed by static defenses, but Nighthawk's commander forced to retreat. Now the Southwest is no longer guaranteed for Nighthawk. Instead, they're desperately trying to take, well, keep their commander alive, take that out of there. Same time though, Reaver's coming in to go for a much stronger assault. And with all the Ronin up front, actually quite vulnerable to to the glaives coming in near the commander for defense. There's nothing stopping the Reavers from essentially wrecking everything that Spectacular has built up over the eastern side of the map. Nighthawk is completely winning out in this engagement. It was a strong effort, but unfortunately, Nighthawk's commander, they were, they were defended by just the right type of units. The Ronin were not anywhere near the Reavers. The Reavers now completely able to just waltz through Catastrophe's base and the Glaives as well from Nighthawk just doing whatever they want. Surprised Catastrophe did not put the Ronin on repeat beforehand. Because they know Reavers are there. They know that it's the Raider phase is basically over and Titan Duel, it's a map that actually has a relatively long Raider phase for how open it is. Because I mean, because of how open it is. Because it's a diagonal map. There's a lot of room to basically flank around your opponents. But the problem is that, at this point, Nighthawk has invested quite a bit in Reavers, and when you don't have Ronin, Reavers are basically an assault unit. Or we're not fighting against Skirmishers Reavers, they're an assault unit. They have enough damage, not so much HP, but definitely damage to get through static defenses, to get through, well, obviously Raiders, as they're supposed to, so quick mobile defenses are destroyed. Granted, Nighthawk's taking advantage of this position to start building up real assaults with the Knights, but my point still stands. But the stage of the game where the Ronin, or sorry, where the Reavers were coming in and the Ronin were not for Catastrophe, those Reavers did basically assault work. And now Nighthawk, they've taken the front right in front of Catastrophe's base. Right here. Everything behind that belongs to Nighthawk. They just haven't actually put metal extractors on it yet. And that is being very quickly rectified. Same time though, Stardust from Catastrophe stopping Nighthawk from being able to destroy the base outright. Can I use the Reaver and Nighthawk? Unfortunately, as with before, the Glaive positioning is not as good as Catastrophe's. Fortunately, walk, just a line waltzing into that Reaver. Oh. No, Nighthawk is using line move. They absolutely are using line move. I, say, I, I thought they might be using coin move. Now, they're definitely not using line move as well as they theoretically could. Oh wait, are they? No, they're not using line move. That was holding control and hitting move. When you do that, it maintains the relative position of units, but it maintains that like at that angle, it's, it's kind of complicated. The point is it's not line move. And Nighthawk throwing forces away. Catastrophe has a lot of reclaim to work with, and they have, well, was four conjurers and still is, or five con oh, one rebuilding, the rest reclaiming. And that is a lot. 20 metal per second off Conjurers, and this field has got, what, four, oh, 700 metal. Alright, so that's 20 metal per second. 35 seconds of economic parity, that's pretty good. So Catastrophe's not that economically behind, although granted now with the Knights coming in here, and of course, the production is being maintained. Nighthawk is going to have a pretty easy time holding onto this. And Catastrophe realizing this, throws in the towel. It's a very smart place from Nighthawk coming in early on, pushing Catastrophe away, making sure to maintain... War zone paused. So it's a very smart play early on, making sure to maintain control over the center of the map. Obviously maintain control over Nighthawk's corner of the map push out with the glaives and 
I liked the fact that Nighthawk was sending the Glaives out to scout out a bit, but not to immediately raid into the base. They knew the Catastrophe was going to have enough in the way of static defenses that they weren't going to be able to get anywhere with Glaives in Catastrophe's base. So instead, just flanking around the side while allowing their commander to come in, start building up around the side, basically unopposed. And the Reaver, when they threw it out, was smart. But honestly, that Catastrophe, I think, underestimated the potential of those Reavers. Because honestly, the Reavers won the game. Like, the Reavers coming in the side here as Catastrophe was trying to assault the Stardust and Commander, that was the game-turning point. And if the Ronin had been over to the side to take care of the Reavers, the Reavers wouldn't have gone very far. And then the Commander could have been taken care of later. So unfortunately, that... Yeah, that, that lack of counters, like the lack of Ronin, and that's just the way that early Cloakbot works. I mean, it's not exactly hard counters, but it's certainly a lot more economically efficient to use the right units for the right job. Actually, if you look at Catastrophe's wreckage, they weren't... They didn't really have a whole lot in the way of static defenses up front, as I recall, and I don't see any evidence of that. Nothing that Reavers couldn't wipe out. Lotuses are not effective against Reavers. Those Reavers, two Reavers will chew through pretty much any number of Lotuses. So yeah, that was that. So next we're going to have a match between Sithroth and the Warning on Mercurial. Which I am looking forward to because I... I liked Quicksilver enough, but Mercurial is a massive improvement over that. And I, I think I've seen Sisteroth before. I don't really remember too well. I'm sorry if you're watching Sisteroth. But, well, we'll obviously get a better idea of how they play in just a moment. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. <laughs> 